On your mark, get set. Right, right. President Reagan has now set in motion a program of research and development for futuristic weapons to defend this country from incoming nuclear missiles. With today's signing of a national security directive, Mr. Reagan confirmed the long-range research he proposed Wednesday night. It will improve communications and control systems that are vital to these strategic forces. Applications uh, discussed in the patents included destroying missiles. Communications, control, and disruption were included. There were some other ideas, both to possibly modify weather, and finally uh, to lift a portion of the upper atmosphere further out into space, where hopefully it would be able to deflect missile trajectories. Zap incoming missiles, disrupt global communications, and engineer the weather. What does HARP do? HARP is, is a large antenna where we beam radio frequency energy up into the upper atmosphere, and we create on a small scale what the sun normally does. HARP uses a billion watts beam straight into the ionosphere for experiments. Picture these strings on the piano as layers of the earth. Each one has its own frequency. What we used to do is beam radio waves into the ground and it would vibrate any strings that were present in the ground. We might get a sound back like and we'd say that's natural gas. We might get a sound back like and we say that's crude oil. We were able to identify each frequency we accomplished this with just 30 watts of radio power. If you do this with a billion watts, the vibrations are so violent that the entire piano would shake. In fact, the whole house would shake. In fact, the vibrations could be so severe underground that could even cause an earthquake. Los Angeles Times on April 21st, you said that the, you told the Associated Press though, that the American government has created weather tampering techniques so that the new world order will be able to starve millions of Americans and control the rest. And after 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. The chilling new world order where the masters of mind control will become masters of the world. And ready? There's one more. Some people believe the technology being tested here could be used for sinister projects involving humans. Radio waves messing around with people's brain waves. Mind control will be the ultimate non-lethal weapon. Declassified information on mind control, weather manipulation, bioweapons, chemical weapons. While we feel that HARP is a unique facility, it's not the only one like it in the world. Uh, HARP has some, some capabilities that uh, we feel are better than some of the others. You can change the frequencies. Dr. Persinger's tests suggest that carefully programmed electromagnetic frequencies can tap into individual brains and influence people's emotions. Um, you can shift the beam so that you can you can move it from one part of the of the ionosphere to another, and it has quite a bit more power than some of the other facilities throughout the world that are doing the same kinds of research. The same kind of signals, signals in the same frequency range, can affect uh, human mood. The human brain operates on very low frequencies. For example, when we're thinking, I mean, uh, actively, uh, we're generating about. 
13, 14 cycles per second. When we're meditating, we're generating eight cycles per second. And when we're asleep, the brain waves are running at about four cycles per second. And HARP is capable of generating all of these frequencies. These kinds of signals can control the human brain. And if you can control these frequencies and multiples of these frequencies and various combinations, you can control all kinds of emotions. You can generate happiness. You could generate uh, uh, sadness. You can generate any mood you want. Uh, similarly, using the appropriate fields, we can induce fear and apprehension. I chose a what's called a phased array antenna for the patents because it can be aimed. Picture holding your microwave oven in your hands with the door open. Then you can move it around and send those microwaves different directions. And for these applications where I wanted precise control of where the power was, uh, I felt that was the best type of antenna to use. And that is the kind that HARP has built. Which is well recognized in the literature. He started first using implants uh, in the brain. He then um, used radio frequency with implants and eventually he found that energy at one fiftieth of what the earth naturally produces could in fact in certain frequency ranges trigger uh, huge mood swings. This document from Maxwell Air Force Base lays out um, the use of electromagnetic weapons technologies for debilitating human beings. Using electromagnetic warfare against human beings you can cause disease, you can cause hysteria, or you can cause passivity for population control. The cognitive processes of the human brain are really quite simple. And if you understand how they work, you can make entire populations think and decide uh, the manner in which you wish. You can get into their minds. Persinger thinks the implications are chillingly real. Suppose you generate a field that produces fear, fundamental fear, in large numbers of people. And then over the television, more traditional ways, you say, the reason we're having this fear is because of this particular group. And now you start to move the population believing in a direction that you wish. To influence 250 million people, the equivalent of the entire population of the United States, may not be that difficult. According to Dr. Persinger, you already have the technology, satellites and television, and radio transmitters. Mind control may already be happening. We know the mysterious PSYOPs plane can beam persuasive sounds and pictures into people's television sets. Will it someday beam disturbing frequencies directly into the mind? Psychological warriors are bringing cutting-edge technology to a more insidious weapon, propaganda. We're moving toward third-wave modes of warfare, which apply information, uh, knowledge, intelligence, strategy, deception, uh, media, uh, the use of the media for managing the perception of... Uh, uh, there are certain cities that now have required all the new towers that are being built to be disguised. Andrew Messing is the president of Larson Camouflage, a company that builds cell phone towers in a wide variety of disguises, from palm trees to water towers to flagpoles. This is one of our saguaro cacti that's going up to the Phoenix area, and the antennas are concealed inside. They're extremely realistic. People drive by them all the time, and they think they're real cacti. Cell antennas are also being hidden inside all kinds of architecture, like clock towers and fake chimneys. Any cell phone, yours included, can be pinpointed, even if you never make a call. Cell phone users beware, Big Brother may be listening. The Federal Bureau of Investigation can now hear everything you say, even when the cell phone is turned off. I know it sounds kind of out there, but using your phone's tracking device, authorities can now activate the microphone inside the dreaded thing, allowing them to eavesdrop on you and your conversations. Uh, we can go one stage further if you like, we can put them inside the brain. Here are human nerve cells growing onto the surface of an RFID type chip. Uh, human brain cells don't need to be taught to do this, they are genetically programmed to work with computers. In fact, they love computers. Here's an example. Here is a chip, there's the chip, you put the brain tissue on and it organizes itself. The brain cells work their way in and they start communicating with each other and with the brain of the PC. 
Have you ever really put enough electrodes into the brain to understand these signals in a meaningful way? In your time, no. In my time, yes. You well, begin to lose your individuality. You will be evolving into a rather different social entity. How do you push the electrode to the brain? So what you do is you actually send a certain number of them, a bundle, and then the bundle uh, would, uh, would be the nanowires would be allowed to, to float into the uh, uh, bloodstream until they can go no further. Like it or not, though, the brain-computer interface is coming along pretty quickly. And once you figure out how to get a single electrode to accurately record brain signals, it's not too hard to get thousands to work. It's mostly a matter of miniaturization.